when I first started transitioning, it was in South Florida, uh, 19, 20 years old. Me and a few gal pals, we all came to the realization like, oh, I think I'm tra-, because we would like go out and drag together. Mm-hmm. And then we realized like this doesn't feel like you're dressing up. like performative. This feels like just kind of right. Mm-hmm. And so uh, we realized in a time where gender therapists, I the concept had never even crossed my mind. We're all trans. And back then you used to be able to buy your hormones online uh, in housepharmacy.com. Mm-hmm. So we were taking everything. We were taking blockers. We were taking shots. We were doing patches. We were doing progesterone all at once. I ended up overdosing on hormones and develop, developed a cyst on my thyroid the size of a golf ball overnight wow. and uh, freaked myself the fuck out. Ended up having this huge existential, like spiritual uh, awakening. Wouldn't have traded it for the world. Became like really involved in religion and just searching spirituality and figuring out what is my relationship with my creator? Who do I believe God is? Who do I believe I am as my spirit? Became really um, at peace with the idea that this is a skin sleeve. This is literally just a decoration for the soul and what it looks like speaks so much less towards who I am as a person than who I choose to be as a person. Mm. So I really stopped looking at the aesthetics and focusing on me as a person and my spiritual growth. There's a really beautiful uh, excerpt from the Talmud that I wa- I'm trying to memorize right now. It's on my phone, but it basically speaks towards uh, be uh, in love with grace now, and just because don't be worried about the existential worries of the world. However, do not dismiss them. You're still a part of it. You know, mm-hmm. so do what you can that is good, essentially. Mm-hmm. I completely mucked that up. But um, I I just saw it like yesterday and I'm like, holy shit, that's like my whole MO. That's mm-hmm. what I've been trying to do this whole fucking time. All thinly veiled and laughs and wigs. But um, so I uh, moved to Los Angeles and was exposed to all these different words I'd never heard of. Um, in South Florida, like I said, it's a very isolated echo chamber. And all of my friends and colleagues were like, if you are a trans woman, that means this. And you like this and you sleep with these people and you act like this in public. And one thing that I do try and hold on to that I learned back then is the way you leave the house is the way you return. Don't take off your shoes. Don't take off your lashes. Don't take off your <laughs> lipstick. The way that you left is the way you go home. That's I one like thing. That. And you're not done until you have your earrings on. <laughs> That's another thing that I really hold on to. But um, so I moved to Los Angeles. I was introduced to all these different concepts, non-binary and uh, gender fluid and pansexual and all these words I'd never heard of. And I was like, oh, there are other people who feel the way I feel because I had fully detransitioned. I was mm-hmm. living as a very, very feminine man. Mm-hmm. And I was OK with that. You know, a lot of people like to say I was born in the wrong body, X, Y, Z. My lived experience is I was born in a body and I was born in a Ferrari, but I was really a Porsche. There was nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. The insides were still lovely. They just didn't really match up. So I just had some, you know, fabrications done Mm -hmm. to make the outsides more authentic to what the insides were. Mm-hmm. And granted, I'm not a mechanic, so uh, my analogy could be flawed. But it sounds good to me. I know nothing. You know, about cars. so I don't know shit about cars, <laughs> but I do think that would be a fun hobby when I get older. Right. I might want to take up some mechanics classes because I tell you what, highway robbery, those mechanics all <laughs> the time. Seriously, but um, that's why I don't drive. But in any event, I realized, okay, so you definitely are not cis. Mm -hmm. gendered that Mm -hmm. is a given let's extrapolate on that so when i first began medically transitioning i used the term 
non-binary because I did not identify with a lot of the uh, very binary trans women that I were, was friends with in South Florida. So I thought, okay, well, I don't feel a lot of the same feelings as these trans women, so that means I must be something else. What kind of feelings were those? Well, there's just very, once again, my experience, pardon me, Mm-hmm. I felt that these women were very much stuck in these heteronormative gender roles of, okay, so, and there's still a lot of trans women who feel this way and it's whatever, it's their experience and it's all whatever, cool. But um, things like, okay, so you should strive to be passing. You should strive to look a certain way as to not be perceived as trans. Mm. A lot of trans women do not want to be perceived as anything but a woman. Mm -hmm. And while I do feel that I am a woman and I will use that word to describe myself, I am also cognizant of the fact that I am a trans woman. Mm -hmm. So when it, when you're getting, when you're getting down to brass tacks, it's all just words, right? you know, that we're bickering over. And the English language is hugely flawed in and of itself. So why are we bickering over something that is not infallible? Mm -hmm. You know, it's not perfect. Why are we fighting over these words if at the end of the day, what we want is action and justice and equality? I feel like we're getting a little too distracted with words. You want to fight with me about chromosomes? It, I don't fucking care, my guy. I don't <laughs> care. I'm living my life authentically for myself. And this is where I have a lot of discourse with other trans women that I grew up with in that my uh, gender presentation is not performative for other people. Mm-hmm. I Every single thing I've done, it took me for years to decide to get my boobs done mm-hmm. because I was like, am I doing this? because I feel pressure to do it in order to assimilate with the way that the cisgendered heterosexual uh, culture that shaped the world has changed history in order to make us believe what is normal? Mm -hmm. Or am I doing it because I want big titties? (laughs) And I finally came to the realization, you've always had big tit energy. You've always been a big titty bitch. You've just... You were uh, moonlighting in the itty bitty titty committee for a long time, and that's fine. But you graduated. I feel like that's one of the most profound things I've ever heard. I'm not, actually not joking. I like <laughs> love the way you put that. That is like <laughs> that's a highlight clip. Ah, sure. well, yeah. So I just realized every, and this I get from my mother and my father, and it's one of my hugest flaws and one of the, my greatest strengths. It's that. I will not do something because I feel pressure to do it. I will do it because it feels right for me. Yeah. And every surgery I've had, every choice I've made in my career, I have made because it's what I felt at the time was the most authentic thing to do for myself. Mm -hmm. And what's ironic is a lot of those things are at the end of the day, um, performative, Mm -hmm. you know, do I make the choice to perform or do I make the choice to take a step back and not do anything? And to everything there is a season, you know, sometimes I will just take a step back and I'll just not do anything. But um, yeah, I found that especially with my gender, now I am very comfortable in the concept that I am a woman. I am a trans woman, but it took a lot of growing to get there. And I think that there are a lot of people, especially with mine and the younger generation, with millennials and Gen Z, who want to be louder than everybody else. And they want their opinion to be heard because historically, if you shout the loudest, you're the one that's going to close mouths, don't get fed. Mm -hmm. But Um, I think that if you don't have that lived experience, if you haven't been on this earth for a certain amount of time, 
maybe your voice needs just a little bit more maturing. Maybe mm-hmm. your point of view just needs a little bit more extrapolating mm-hmm. before you go out there and you start being an ambassador for people. Hello, my amazing listeners. You know how much I love bringing this podcast to your ears every week. So if you're looking a way to support the show and get some fantastic perks, I've got just the thing, my Patreon page. With plans starting at just $5 a month, you can be part of our exclusive community. Your support not only helps to keep this podcast going, but it also unlocks some really cool bonuses. Imagine getting access to the live streams of my interviews as they happen. You'll be right in the middle of the action, seeing all of the unedited moments. But that's not all. As a Patreon member, you'll also get exclusive bonus content. I'm talking extra mini episodes where our guests answer questions submitted by you. Plus, you'll have access to my fine art photography and behind the scenes videos, giving you a sneak peek into my creative process. And guess what? If you opt for a discounted year long membership, you'll save even more while supporting the show. Longtime subscribers even get free HRU merchandise as a token of my gratitude. So want to join us? Head over to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered and become a part of our growing community. Your support means the world to me. Let's make this podcast even better.